everyone, it's Rose. It's day 11th of our coronavirus uh, stay in place. So I stay in place by cooking and I drink wine. The only reason I drink wine is it makes me more creative in the kitchen. If you believe that, then I have a bridge in Florida that I'm going to uh, sell to you. Also, you have to excuse me, but my hair and makeup people are off right now during the whole coronavirus pandemic, so I was on my own. Today we're making bignolati. Bignolati are an Italian um, delicacy. They're actually from my mother's hometown, my parents' hometown, which is Raccomuto, Sicily. And what they mean is pinwheels. And as you watch me make them, you're going to understand why we get the name. But they're like a meat pie, but they're fantastic. Okay, so first you're gonna make your dough. I'm, don't tell my mother I said this to you, but seriously, if you go to your local grocery store or your pizza shop and they sell pizza dough, just buy it. You don't have to make your own dough. I make my own dough because my mother taught me how. Okay, so we're gonna make our dough and in order to, you can, you can use a rolling pin. I don't because I have a pasta maker, which they're so inexpensive to get. You know, if you can just look on Amazon, you can just get them and they don't cost very much, but you'll, once you start using it, you'll use it for a lot of things that you didn't expect to use it for. Okay, so the first time I run it through more than once, and this is in the widest setting, okay? This is setting number one. So then after that, I just make sure it's got enough flour on it that it doesn't stick. And you're gonna love these. Seriously, you're gonna love these when they're done. You're gonna love how they look. All right, and here we go. So now we're at number three. I like to skip because I'm always in a hurry. Everybody tells me that. I have to slow down, okay. Now we're at number five. And I'm just gonna run it through again. Okay, now you can see that it's getting thinner. This is great, this is perfect. This dough is just perfect. My mother would be so proud. Okay, don't, don't show my mother this video though because she'll yell and say, get your hair out of your eyes. Okay, because my mother's not like, you know, you have to pin it all back. So, um, so don't show my mother. But this is my mother's recipe. So then I go to number six, which is the second last setting on my pasta machine. Number seven is too thin, but I find number six is just the perfect thickness. So look at this. So it's coming out. Let's just, coming out nice and thin, but not too thin. And you're probably wondering like, what is she doing? I will show you. First of all, I'm gonna cut off the ends. It, I hate the ends. I just put it back to the rest of the dough. And so go to the other end and just cut it off. Okay, so now we have a nice uniform piece of dough. Now remember, this has yeast in it, so it's not gonna be like a, I, I, you know, it's not gonna be like a pie pastry. It is gonna grow a little bit, but this is fried onions, seriously. That's all it is, fried onions with a little salt and pepper. So you just put the fried onions on your dough and not too much. My biggest mistake when I first started making this is I put too much in all of the layers. And you're like, and it's like they, they exploded. Seriously, they exploded. I mean, it tasted great, but you know, you didn't want to serve it to anybody. So don't mind my fingers, but like, you know, I have washed my hands for 20 seconds several times today and before I started here. So go with me on this, all right? We're all in this together. Um, I'd love to hear from you and see what you're doing to stay busy and not go crazy during this. I'm, you know, I miss my family terribly. I'm in the States, they live in Canada. 
My daughter lives in a different city. She's not that far away, but I still miss her. So I just thought I would do this to stay busy. Okay, see? Okay, the onions. And you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. No, it'll be fine because like, you're going to roll it, right? I'll show you. So this is ground meat, okay? It's fried with salt and pepper. Um, it's, it's just browned. You don't put any oil in it or anything. Now, what I have learned, and this was purely by mistake, is um, do you use a, a sausage filling? Just, you know, like they have ground sausage. Oh my God, it's fantastic. It really does make it taste good. But, you know, you can use whatever you like. If you prefer ground veal, if you ground pork, ground beef, if there's anything that you prefer, it's all going to taste good. If you don't use the ground sausage, though, make sure you season your meat because otherwise it's going to be a little bland. Okay, so now there's your meat. And then you're going to get some Romano cheese. What? Doesn't everybody have this much grated Romano cheese in their house? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is grated Romano cheese, okay? I freeze it so it lasts me a long time. So take your hands and then you just sprinkle it on top of the filling like this. And you, you know, isn't your mouth starting to water? Doesn't it look like this is going to taste good? It looks so simple and it is. And yet it's got a fantastic taste. Okay, so take the dough, the closest side to you and you fold it over. Okay, fold it over. Fold it over, fold it over, fold it over. See, and the, and the dough is just right. It's not sticking, it's not too thin, it's not too thick. Then you take the other side and you fold it over again. This side is even easier. Okay, fold it over, fold it over. Now, this is the other thing I used to do wrong. When my mother first taught me how to make these, you can cut the end off if you, there's nothing in the end. I... You have to pick it up and you have to start rolling it like a pinwheel. But I used to roll it and it was like way too tight. Mm -hmm. And then she reminded me that, you know, the dough has yeast in it. It's gonna grow. So we're not gonna be tight. We're gonna give it room to grow. So you see that I'm just giving it room. I'm just rolling it, but not killing it, you know, where it's too tight. And I am telling you, when you taste these after they're done, you're gonna say, oh my goodness, this is fantastic. So when you, you get to the end, I don't know, my mother does this thing where she just kind of like curls the end over. I don't know what it is. Toothpicks, you need toothpicks. I don't know if people still buy toothpicks these days. I buy them for the odd cocktail party, but I'm gonna use them here and you're gonna just put it in your baking pan. All right. Now, if you notice here, I have, this is just beaten egg. It's just beaten egg. I put a little water in it so it's just a little easier to spread. My mom doesn't, but um, it works. But you have to cover all of it, okay? Because this is what's gonna give your pinulati. do you see this? Pinwheel, pinulata. One is a pinolata, more than one is pinolate. So do you see how nice? This is gonna give it a nice golden color. And if you like sesame seeds, you don't have to do this, but if you like sesame seeds, just sprinkle a few on the surface. And then you'll see what it looks like when it's done. So. When we come back, I'm going to show you what the bignolati look like when they're finished. Hi, we're back. Okay, so this is what your bignolati look like after you take them out of the oven. I have baked these in a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. See how nice and golden brown they are? They're just perfect, okay? And then I wanted to show you what they look like on the inside. Now, these are just what we call, we're, they're plain, vignolati, but you can make them like a pizza. You can put pepperoni in them, you can put olives, peppers, whatever you like. We happen to like them 
plain with a little ground meat and the onions. My father likes them with just onions and cheese. So um, there you have it. This is how you make rakmutisi mbinulati, and we'll see you the next time. God bless and stay safe.